Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Leftovers Season 1 Episode 3, it's called Two Boats and a Helicopter, full spoilers for the episode as always. Um, I didn't remember a lot about this episode, because as we said when we started this, I'd seen some of Season 1, you'd seen all of it, but I did remember there was an episode that focused on Christopher Eccleston's character Matt. Yeah, it was that... quite a pivotal episode, wasn't it? Yeah, and I remember that being a thing. I thought it was episode four for some reason, but it was three. So we're here. That's the one we're talking about. Um, and it's entirely about him. Obviously, we run, run into other characters uh, in the show, but it's all from his perspective and what he's going through, which is really interesting. It's an interesting spin on it because he was a very minor character in the first two. Yeah, it's also even out of the, the more major characters, I think it's the first time we've really gotten inside someone's head and understood what's happening in there. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like I understand him now better than I do like Kevin. Anyone or, else? Yeah. yeah. No, that 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 that, that completely makes sense. Uh, uh, so, and this is basically the story of him struggling for money. Uh, his his church. Apparently, he's not been paying his his bills for a while. He's it's, they've already foreclosed, but they they gave him this deal where he can stay there unless someone comes and buys it. If someone comes yeah. and buys it, then you need to go. Um, and it's pretty nice of them, to be fair. <laughs> well, and the banker's quite friendly with him. He's very sympathetic, and uh, clearly he's he's liked not amongst everyone, as we call the see. Because uh, the start of the episode, of course, he tells this story, which turns out to be about him. Uh, he t- tells a story about a, a young boy who found out he was going to have a sister, and but once the sister came, he felt like she got all the attention, so he prayed that he would get attention again <laughs> and this was delivered by giving him cancer uh, and naturally when you are uh, got an illness that could kill you you tend to get a bit of attention uh, so it is the idea of it's been a double-edged sword well technically you know if this is a god that stepped in and gave you what you wanted he kind of did he, yeah yeah it's the, the, you know, be careful what you wish for yeah um but we find out it's him because he says oh there's a girl uh, who, who liked who liked playing on a swing uh, who's now in a coma uh, she's been coming for eight days, and that that boy once again asked for your for your attention for her sake, um, and they pray. And of course, uh, angry person comes into the church and beats the crap out of him, uh, yeah. and I think it's pretty clear why, right, right from the get go. But you find out they make it abundantly clear. This is someone he's been putting up his notices, he's he's uh, his flyers around saying, oh, this person who disappeared was this was awful because of this, and in this case, it was a. Uh, Presumably, this guy's daughter, or maybe niece, or something like that, uh, said, "Oh, she she was selling drugs, or she was doing whatever." I can't even remember. What yeah, it was, yeah. Was it selling it drugs? doesn't matter. Yeah, I can't remember what it was it's exactly. That, but... Yeah, it was something bad, and it's something that damages her reputation. How people remember them is Aye. the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he shoves it in his mouth, and he's he's left lying there. I also I also like this the idea that it, it was completely in close up the entire time he's telling these stories until near the end. Where it shows you that there's hardly anyone in there. There's hardly anyone in the church. Yeah, yeah. It's just a few scattered people. That's all that's left. Yeah, it's just him. Um, and we see the the guilty remnant are watching, watching the church from afar. As, as they do. As they do. Um, and what she thinks is for him. They think they're watching him. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, we think that makes that, that makes some sense given what we've seen of them. Yeah, so we've far. seen them watch other people. You know, they pick the targets and yeah. they, they they follow them. It makes sense. Um, and again, we see that he's got a good relationship with uh, with Kevin, the, the chief, because he comes by and he's like, "No, other cop, you go away. I'll I'll deal with this." Uh, and he, he speaks to him in a very informal manner. It's just very like, "How many times we're going to do this?" To yeah. the point where at the end of the scene, Matt says, "Oh, I'll, I'll see you next time." <laughs> Which <laughs> just just an assumption. And he's and Kevin's just pleading, "Just stop pissing people off. This is this is this is what keeps happening." Uh, but he, 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 when he's in the hospital, he goes to visit the girl who's in the coma, and he goes by, and she's not there, and he asks the, the, the nurse who's there, uh, where is she? There's a girl here, blah, 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 what happened? It's like, oh, she woke up, and she's fine, she left. And he, he looks happy, and yeah. Matt says, oh, me and my, my, uh, my, uh, you know, me and my church, we prayed for her this morning. And the yeah. guy just bluntly says, she woke up last night. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which is a bittersweet moment. It did make me laugh. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. It's the idea that, yeah, yeah, she woke up, but you didn't have anything to do with it this time. There's no way you can even think that you did. No, cool, because I, I think a big theme of this episode is that he, he talks about how everything, like the leftover event, if you want to call it that, LD, 
right? Sure. <laughs> that that was that, that, that that's a test. More so, yeah. everything after is a test for what's to come, and it's almost like his own faith has been repeatedly tested throughout this episode. Yeah, it's also a nice little bit of foreshadowing. The, the, the actual moment, the idea that it was too late mm. like, to, to make any difference. Yeah, even the thing with the swings, because swings is another image that comes up later. It is, yeah. And even the act of a swing, you know, going back and forth, like things yeah. swing from, you know, both sides uh, is kind of a thing going going through the episode. Uh, as is imagery, uh, pigeons seem to be his, his sign, his biblical sign of what to do. Why not? But obviously we get we get, really get a, a glimpse into his head, not only through his struggles and through his determination, and I was just a set of the world as well right now, the the, the idea that this, this guy comes by with his baby behind his wife's back because she doesn't want religion to be involved in her kid's life. Especially yeah, yeah, since people the are event. so... I mean, it's the idea that, the, that his church is so empty as well. People are so disillusioned with religion. Like The idea that if that was the rapture, then they're annoyed that they didn't get chosen. And if it wasn't, what sort of God would let all these people just go and, and leave them to deal with this? So they're disillusioned either way. Yeah. Uh, so, so he helps. And then he tries to offer him money, which he turns down. Matt turns down the money. But... He then offers him something else. He offers him basically gossip on someone who vanished. Uh, another potential person for him to put up in one of his, his flyers that say this person did bad things. In this case, it was a guy who gambled away his, college, his kid's college fund. Yeah. Uh, and he goes to investigate. That's why it gets him to the casino, uh, which, by the way, uh, as soon as he walked in the casino, all I could think was, Hello! People who watch Twin Peaks will laugh at that. People who do not watch Twin Peaks will have no idea what I just did. But, uh, but that's all I can think of what uh, But yeah, it, and he sees the pigeons on the table and he's, he's basically just investigating to see if this story pans out. Was this guy here? Did he do this? Uh, so at, at the very least, he's, he's, he's researching what he's... Like, if he's going to badmouth someone, if he's going to like besmirch their memory, he is at least checking that it's correct. Yeah, he yeah, it. he's not just throwing slanderous statements around. He, he is doing his diligence and you know checking things out properly. What did you think of his reason? Because he explains it to the security guard at the casino, and he says, "We have to separate the people, you know, the innocent from the corrupt, because everyone's just sort of throwing them in together in one list right now. And if we can't separate them, then what does anything mean?" I mean, I think it's the idea of, like, if you look at any sort of horrific event, you know, like a a, a terrorist attack, for example, you remember the attacker separately to the victims. In the sense that some people were punished, some weren't. And, and this is the same here, I think, in the sense that he's going, no, some of these, this was maybe what they deserved. You know, who knows? But some of these deserve to be remembered as better than, than the others. They don't all deserve to be given the same level of respect. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought it was interesting. I thought, like, I never, because it seemed vindictive. It seemed kind of cruel that he was doing it. It's almost like, why does it matter? Like, just let people move on kind of thing. Yeah, I think he, it's it's... It's not that he's trying to put people down, he's trying to raise the others up, I think. But that's why I thought, like, previously up until this point, it felt, it felt, it just, it felt aimless, like, what, what is the point, like, and this hmm. reasoning made me understand him a little bit, I don't necessarily agree with him still, but I at least understand it a little bit better. Yeah, and I think that comes back to what I said at the start of this here, that I, I understand this this character now, whereas a lot of the others, I still, I, I mean, I'm getting inklings now, but I don't understand them like I do, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we find out about uh, his life, and there's allusions to uh, him, like he can't go out at night for some reason, and he, he goes home, and there's almost a little fake out when you think, oh, is this his wife that's sitting on the on the couch? But it's not. It's a it's a carer who he's he's failing to pay. She complains that he's not paying her. He gives her the last couple of dollars he's got in his wallet. I mean, she does say it's been three weeks. I mean, is it that unusual to wait a month till you get your pay? Well, not well, not if it was if she's getting paid monthly and she was due a payment three weeks ago. She's waited almost Maybe. double the time. Maybe the, the implication I got was that it was three weeks since she'd started. No, no. How did you read that? I don't know. I thought she. I thought she was new. Like he'd lost the previous one for the same reason. No. And... I, where did you get this from? She, she. She has clearly been doing this for a while, and the reason why she stuck around is because she was already doing it, and she has like a sense of loyalty. She knows 
his wife, she knows uh, him. Uh, could be. Uh, and it's boiling point. Yeah, I don't know where you got that from at all. But no, his, his wife's his, his wife's sick. She's she's basically in a coma. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And she she's in a bed, and he has to bathe her. He has to put her to sleep, put her to bed, all that kind of thing. And she can't be left on her own, which is why he's, obviously he's got a carer when he's not there. Um, and he even pulls out a little little sort of bed, a little portable bed that he pulls out and sleeps next to her in the same room. And it's it's all very kind of sad. And I guess at this point we see, man, this guy. This guy is not having a good good yeah, period his, of his life. His life is kind of shit right now. He, he he's getting beat up. People aren't even coming to see his church. Um, yeah, and I think this really speaks to who he is as a character. The fact that we see all of this, like we see this now, but you don't mm-hmm. see that publicly. You just see him getting on with what he was doing, and you know, in this case, in his case, it's this newsletter and belittling certain people. But he he's not stopping for any reason. He, I mean, he. There's, there's one or two signs of it, you know, when, when something's brought up related to her. You know, when, when Kevin says, oh, can you, yeah. do you want to come and uh, have a barbecue like the old times, uh, you know, or when the, the banker said, uh, how, is, how is the wife kind of thing. Yeah. Like, there was little moments where you could tell he wasn't comfortable talking about because when the banker asked, he didn't, he didn't even answer, he didn't even acknowledge the question. He just let a second pass and then he, he kept going with the conversation yeah, that he yeah. had. It's Eddie that obviously these people know what's happened and they're, you know, the bank is asking just as a politeness. Yeah. Which again goes back to the back to the care. I, I think it's sort of sympathy that she's not just yeah. took off before now. Like she, it's gotten to the breaking point because it's like, okay, there's only so many weeks I can work without being paid before I have to say, screw this. I need to go and find something else. Uh, it, uh, it all makes sense. But no, at, at this point, he's getting beat up. No one's coming to his church. His wife is basically a vegetable, and he's he's got no money. Uh, everything everything is imploding. His entire life is crumbling in, uh, and this is when he gets really sad. He looks up at the the painting, and he he has like a moment of divine intervention. It's like he remembers something. Yeah, and it's clear. Obviously, he is a man of faith. Obviously, he's a priest or reverend anyway, but. Even even without that, it's not necessarily that he's a, a man of faith to God. It's that throughout all of this, he doesn't stop. He's convinced in what he's doing. Almost to a fault. Oh, absolutely. Almost. I mean, yeah. He so he he goes to the Kevin's house. He goes to Kevin's house with a shovel. Uh, yeah. That's probably like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Um, obviously something's about to come up that we, we have no way of predicting because we have no reason to believe why he would go here with a shovel uh, but he runs into Laurie who yeah. who's in the is in the backyard on a swing which I think is a uh, bit of notable imagery especially since when he comes back here later the swing is kind of just, just just one swing just the one she was sitting on just kind of rocking yeah yeah I think it's notable that there is obviously the two swings there and, and she only sits on the one and then none and I think that's kind of a, a big symbolism as well yeah, and obviously it's not like she was just there because he's, he's walked in and he started digging again when he comes back. He would have seen her. There's no, there's yeah, no way yeah, it would still be. A, a, yeah. a gentle breeze, but it's just happened to move the one. Yeah. The other one's stuck in place while the other one is kind of wavering. Uh, the idea that she's coming here in secret because she said, you know, she makes him, she asked him not to tell anyone that she was here. She's not supposed to come and do this, but she yeah. is still remembering her old life. She's still remembering her family. And uh, he says, I won't tell if you don't. Yeah, very um, good. So, uh, it's funny because she doesn't speak. Yeah, I know. But the, the fact that he said that with a straight face, I think he, he knew what he was saying. I, I hope he did. I think he did. But the fact that he said that anyway, <laughs> I would say that. I'd have done it. Yeah, you would. I'd give you shit for it as well. Uh, but she, she, yeah. So, so I think I think that's quite interesting. Just just the even for sticking on the swing the. Eye, the idea that I don't know just just go back to that opening story about the swing and the girl who who liked being in the swing and being on it until she went all the way up until gravity pulled her back down. The idea that she's on the swing but she's not actually swinging on it like she is just gravity's just got her pulled down right now. Yeah, and it's this idea that like you say as as high as you get, something's going to pull you down. Yeah. But but you can go back up again. That's the whole thing with a swing, isn't it? You put a bit of effort in yourself, and you can fight gravity for a time. But she's not letting herself go back up. She she's committed to this this cult, yeah. And as a result, she's just stuck in the ground. And yeah, but I think it's really interesting that the one that she was on, it's moving slightly when she's gone. It's like the idea that 
oh, just maybe with a bit of a push, she could go back up. Yeah, yeah. It's like she's the, she's not a lost cause, basically, is what that's yeah. saying. Yeah, she's not lost forever. So uh, yeah, so Matt dig, digs out. Uh, it's under the under the barbecue. Uh, the aforementioned yep. mentioned barbecue, which they didn't really need to set up. I'll buy that Kevin owns a barbecue, but they did. They mentioned barbecue earlier on. Yeah, um, and it, I, I think that just works because it's like it's why it's in his mind. Like he'd yeah, had that conversation sure. earlier today. Someone had mentioned barbecue, so it's not just a random thought. There was something there in the day to jog it as well. Yeah. So he pulls out a, an old jar, old peanut butter jar. And in it, there's money, which turns out to be 20 grand. I mean, we obviously yeah. there's no way of telling when he pulls it out, but it's just from later scenes, I know it's 20 grand. Yeah. Um, and it, one of his old leaflets is wrapped around it, presumably his first, because we, 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 we actually skipped a scene with his sister, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, which actually, we didn't even know she really, yeah, that was his sister until that scene, so we will get yeah. to that in a minute. Um, but he, he comes to... He, he looks at this, and because we found out in the last scene, uh, there was a mention of a judge, and I mentioned how... This was the start of all this, and it seems to be related to his wife's incident. Yeah. Um. He he did this because whoever's involved in her accident maybe get away with it or whatever. I mean, we find it later on. It's a bit more specific than that, but just even now, you get a sense that he was corrupt and he showed that he was corrupt, and that started him on this path of doing it for everyone. Uh, yeah. But obviously, it was a, written in the back of it was a "You deserve this, Rev," and it was a uh, Kevin's father who he's close yeah. with. Yeah, and obviously she mentioned the reason he's come on for this is that the bank has told him that there's been a, a bid on the church. Yeah, been he, an offer. he's got until the end of the next day, the next working day when the bank closes, to come up with $135,000, or sorry, $135,001. Yes, I was, I, was, I was just going to add that on for you. I thought you'd forgot. I was going to add that, no. Yeah, because uh, he said that you have to exceed their offer, so you just have to go one up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that's why... So, so he's got this. He's back in the car. He's seeing the pigeons, the red light. We cut to the, and we get the sense that he's using that as a sign. Like he remembers the pigeons. He's going back to that exact table. But before we I, move I, on, I just want to say it's amusing that you you made the the Twin Peaks reference earlier, and then but it, and it's the red that's the guiding here. Flashing red as well. Yeah, yeah. I just, just want to point that out. A little a little coincidental. Yeah. Before we get to that, I want to go back and talk about the, the Nora scene, because that yes. is a really big thing. And I, yes. I don't think it neatly fits anywhere else later, so I'll, we'll do it now. Yeah. So he goes to see Nora, I and mean, we knew they were close in some capacity, because we've seen them hug the last episode. Uh, I mean, it becomes quite clear, it's just through their conversation, because they talk about what their, what their parents left them. It's like, oh right, that's that's his sister. Like, So he's the little boy in the story, this was the sister that came along. Um, and they're having this debate, and he's asking her for money. He's saying, "Can I borrow 135 grand?" And it, what cracked me up is he said, "I promise it's just a, it'll be a loan." And I'm like, "How are you going to pay 135? You're going to like that's going to take like decades, given yeah. the way your money's coming in right now, sunshine. I, <laughs> it's just a loan." Well, I that's promise. it. Like, again, to go back to him being a man of faith, he's he's optimistic and determined because he he says, "Oh, the church is picking up again." I you know I performed a baptism today, and secret. That's, <laughs> yeah, but that that's him going, no, the people will come back to religion and they will come and we will get donations and then I will be able to pay. But do you believe him? No, no, I don't. But I think he genuinely I, believes I, I, that. I was asking my point. Though, that's what Nora's thinking. You can see it in her face. I, I, I felt it. He feels like a crazy man who, I mean, well, maybe crazy, a bit harsh, but just someone who is trying to convince himself of something and you know it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. He's 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 such an optimist in in general. Like everything, he's so convinced of what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, to the in in this case, in this scene, it feels more uh, like he's naive rather than optimistic. To be honest, it feels like beyond it, it that. Does. Um, there's other scenes where there's cl- it's clear belief. Like obviously, when we're getting to the gambling and the pigeons, he's he's just unwavering. It's like no, no, I'm doing this because there was a sign, and it. Yeah. So. But no, I thought this was because this scene starts off very normal. It's like it's like your your sibling or your friends come round for a cup of tea, <laughs> and they got the mugs out. There's a little joker how he's drinking out of the you know world's best dad mug, and she's and she even cracks a joke. She's like, oh, I'm sure you won't mind, uh, and which I like. It shows that she's not just this like this grieving widow still three years later where she can't even mention her family. Yeah, thing. and I think. I think it's noble. This is the first time we've seen her, yeah, you know, with family or you know, even with friends. Really, we haven't seen her outside of uh, a job I mean, or the speeches. Think about it. Matt is like the, her one family member who's left because her parents, her parents but... were already dead. 
her, her immediate yeah. family that, that she started with her husband's all gone. So it's just him. But we haven't even seen her with friends or in a social context. We other than what you friends? Know, seen it. Oh, exactly. That's what I mean. We've only <laughs> seen her at the, the. She went out for the the, the coffee. But then she went to a job, and, and we, we watched that, but we've only seen her in a capacity related to the event. We have never seen her just doing whatever she does up till now, which is why I think it's really different that we see her now, and she is more relaxed, and she is more of a, a person. But do you think that's because she's on her own, or do you think that's because she's with him? I'm not sure yet. I'm taught. I mean, I can see it both ways. Because the way you said that, it's like, oh, this is what she does. I don't think this is necessarily what she does, though. I I feel like... This is going to be a weird comparison. But I feel like she's kind of like Batman. Stay okay. with me. Stay with <laughs> me. All right? She took that job, which, again, we know she... Or at least we think she didn't have to take that job, where she, she is contributing to something that is related to that event, where she's helping people who are grieving in some way. Um, I feel like she probably doesn't just like do things for comfort or enjoyment at least not to any great extent no you know i i feel like not that so much as a show i feel like she is genuinely just kind of happy to see her brother at least at the start of the scene obviously it takes a bit of a turn as, as it goes on but i, I do think it's interesting like is she i mean maybe it's not so much just him maybe it's like when she does have to put on a a friendly face for people she can but we, yeah. obviously, we know that she has some darker things, like, you know, turning in her gears, because the, the gun, the, just the pushing the cup off the table from the last episode, we, we know there's a bit of a sort of edge to her inside. Is this just a show that she's putting on, or is it a genuine case of when she's around people that she's comfortable with, that she is just naturally she has, yeah, better, she has actually her mind's off it? But the problem is we haven't seen enough of her around people that she's comfortable with to actually judge it on. So the scene goes on, he's asking for money because she get a payout for all three of her family members, like like she's sort of trying to give to other people uh, with her yeah. job. Uh, so he's expecting, so that gives us a sense of like just how much money these people, like obviously if she can afford 130 grand, she's got a he- quite a pretty hefty payout per person. So she obviously is a little bit miffed, because like, she even responds like, that money's for my, my children and my husband. And then she, then she offers a an exchange. She she says, "I'll give it to you, but you stop doing the flyers." Which, because as much as they've, they've been friendly together, that this shows that she doesn't necessarily approve of this. Though she sees the damage this is doing to people, but he yeah. reiterates, "No, no, people need to hear this." And it, it, it and he's like, "No, no, no, it's a hard truth to hear, but people need to hear it." Yeah, yeah, but she obviously feels like people can't move on if you keep bringing this up at them and. She, I think, in the same way that we learned that she chose that job with the, you know, the, the bereavement settlements. She wants yeah. to help people move on. Yeah. Uh, so, so then he pulls a bit of a dick move. Yeah, just and a it, little bit. And it turns out he has dirt on her husband that mm. he's not published. In fact, he even even makes this really sort of like faint <laughs> promise after. It's like it's the one story I'll never publish. He says that says that at the end, like that's supposed to make her feel better at this time, but he yeah. he he's like, oh yeah, your husband was cheating on you uh, with your kid's preschool teacher. Uh, they'd go to her apartment, they'd go, they'd go to the plaza in the city. I've got his uh, his his ATM receipts to prove that it was there, uh, and again another sign that he does go and find proof before he makes any accusations whatsoever. He does, but like the idea that this he, he thinks this is going to convince her is baffling to me. Like this is. Like all this leads to is get the, f- the hell out of my house. Like that is all that th- that leads to. Yeah, I think he's just he is so of the opinion that he is right that people do need to hear this. That he's going no, she needs to hear this, and maybe it'll help her move on. Like it maybe the idea if she's mad at him, it'll be easier for her. Oh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's all oh, be mad at me to make you forget about. What you're going through? No, no. If if she's mad at the husband, like if if she's oh, angry right. at him, maybe she she doesn't think about missing him as much because she's annoyed. But this, this is the thing, though. It's been three years. It, yeah. Uh, why now? We, we, I mean, yeah, we, that's the point. We we we're we saying, oh, maybe she's putting on an act. Maybe, but maybe she's not putting on an act. Maybe she actually is mostly kind of starting to hold up. 
Yeah. Uh, and people are treating her differently. Maybe they're pushing the cup off the table as a test just to see what she can get away with because she's almost amused at the way people treat her or she's whatever, right? Yeah. And fine. But here's the thing. So what if she actually is in a better place right now? What if she had actually... Maybe getting over it's a, a too strong a term. You lose your whole family, you still feel something. Be- begun to move on. But she's yeah, she's beginning to function. She's a functioning member of society again. And then he brings this up, and all it does is make it worse because now yeah. she has a reason to think of him again. Yeah, it's it's honestly one of the few times in the episode I don't understand his motivation for it. It, it I, I don't know why he chooses to say this now. It. I think I think he thinks that this will prove to her how important it is that he has to tell people these things. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, no, <laughs> it, it just doesn't work, does it? No, it it, it doesn't. And I, I think it's I think it's a fault of his character that he believes so blindly that he's he's almost willing to not consider what the other people actually want to hear. Oh, absolutely. Like, I think that's the whole thing where he he's getting beat up over this, but he's still like, no, nah, you need to hear it anyway. Yeah, which almost is... I mean, I'd argue that religion to an extent is kind of... The whole idea is that people want to hear these things to make themselves feel better. So the idea that he goes beyond that and says, no, 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 I'm going to tell you what you need to hear is kind of like against that whole idea. Yeah, I think it is really interesting. It's not what you want to hear, it's what you need to hear. Yeah. And does does she need to hear it? I don't know if she does. Like, but she breaks down. I acting from Carrie Coon's very good in the scene, and then, uh, yeah. So, it, we get a sense that they are somewhat close, but that she's not religious. He is obviously, clearly, yeah. and uh, obviously this may cause a rift. Maybe we'll come back to this in a later episode, um, and see how it progresses from there. But I mean, she might be too pissed at him now to even want to hug him in the street like she has been. That would be understandable. So, so yeah, back to the casino. So he goes to the casino, he goes to the same table, and he's like, right, everything on, on red. In fact, at first he goes up to get the chips, and he's like, she's like, oh, what, what kind of chips do you want? He's no, like, no, she just, says, he, she just says, what do you want? What, what do you want it in? And he just says, uh, chips. Yeah, that's not true, true. And then, and then she's like, yeah, but what dom- dom- denomination? And he's just like, does it matter? <laughs> so, so, well, clearly he wants to bet everything anyway. Here's a thousand dollar chips. Yeah, yeah. He's. Like, I'm putting it all on one thing anyway, so I don't, I don't care what you what you give me. Yeah. So he puts twenty thousand on red, and obviously this is quite a high bet. So security guy comes over. It's like, oh, we've got high stakes tables elsewhere. Isn't it? But no, I, I want to use this one, please. So I yeah, I want. One. I want to use the pigeon shit table. <laughs> I want to use the pigeon shit table, and he makes he makes his bet, and it lands in red. And that doubles his money to 40. A uh, couple of looker-ons come over and start to watch because they're excited. Oh, we've got a high roller here. And he does it again, and he wins. And that doubles his money again to 80,000. So he only needs one more win. And then yep. he's got he's got enough. He's got a bit extra to pay his, <laughs> pay his uh, carer for his wife because he made her come over for overtime so he could go out and gamble in the yep. middle of the night. Um, and my, honestly, my favourite moment of the entire episode might be the conclusion to this scene because he bets it all in red again he's, the 80 he's got to see if he can get to 160 and I feel like every time every time he made a bet that it got more stylized with the slow motion the close up of the ball going round the roulette it table took, it took longer to, to show yeah um, and it was all like all building up it went completely silent and you just see his face and he sort of looks up and it, he looks straight at the person like past the camera for a good five plus seconds it's like a long time where you just get a stern face and then that giant smile appears across his face and the music kicks in it yeah. is a perfect moment it's, it is because you know it it's almost smug but it's not because he just believed it would happen yeah it was the, the even the fact that he's come to gamble shows how desperate he was but again how convinced he was in that he was doing the right thing that, that, that he was reading the signs right he is so such a, a man of faith as he's saying like he's so convinced that this is it and he's like yeah i was right i was uh, right to believe yeah well that, that's what the, i mean this, the, the the name of the episode is based is after that story about the, the the guy who keeps turning down help because 
he's waiting for God to save him, so he turns down two boats and a helicopter to like save him from the river or whatever. And this this is him saying, "No, no, I see God offering a solution. I'm going to take the solution." Yeah, yeah, I'm getting on those boats. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's kind of what it is. Uh, but again, uh, it's actually kind of a a roller coaster throughout the rest of the episode with this money because he gets his money, goes to his car. And the guy who was watching him inside comes up and tries to steal it. Like, he beats him up a yeah, little bit, yeah. grabs the bag. At first, he's like, hey, look, can I have a hundred for, uh, you know, we want to get gas and, and we just gambled it all the way because yeah. we're idiots. Uh, that's a hundred dollars, not a hundred K, just, just for yeah. record. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, but he, Matt, Matt is like, no, I'm not letting you take this from me. And he, he actually quite brutally bangs the guy's head into the ground and takes his money back. Yeah, I think it's it's amusing that happens after he did such a nice thing, though, because, you know, the guy wants $100, he's like, here, have two, why not? I've got it to spare. I think, I think to me it says, yeah, he's a, he's a nice person, but it's like, he, he can't let himself be taken advantage of, not now. Yeah, yeah, it's too important. It shows you, yeah, this, this church is everything to him, the fact that he's willing to do this. I think, I think the church, and maybe perhaps more so the, the message, the because, the, yeah. you know, he runs everything out from this church, and so on, and um but so so there's that and then the next day he's, he's, he's all happy he's on his on the way to the bank obviously he comes home and he puts the, he puts the money back in the jar he took he puts 20 grand back in the jar under the the barbecue uh that's when we're talking about the swing was still slightly moving so now he's got five spare he's got five spare uh maybe he's going to give his uh carer lady uh and his bonus uh for for waiting yeah. that'll cover him for the next couple of months since since things have yeah. been tight <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's what he's going to do. But he, he's, he's on the way, and he sees a, a guilt, some a pair of guilty remnants walking down the side of the street, and a, a car goes past and hits one of them in the head with a rock. And he, being the person he is, gets out of the car and goes to help. Now, of course, he leaves the bag of money in the car. So before I even knew where this was going, I was like, oh, the bag of money's in the car on, on its own. What are you doing? Yeah, Just go yeah, to the bank. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like there was a risk here. With that. And ag- again, this is it. even such a big moment for him where everything he's been doing has been to get this money to the bank he sees someone in de- in trouble and he has to stop and help and for his good samaritan deed he also gets hit in the face with a rock which knocks him out we actually get this cool little uh, dream sequence here which kind of well we, we got to hear glasses from a uh, guilty remnant that's what i'm calling her i don't know what her name is but we, we've seen her a lot she wears glasses uh we see her speak uh and she's in regular clothes, uh, which is a bit of foreshadowing, actually, But she's because uh, she's at the entrance of the church. Yeah. And he, go, he goes in, and we kind of have these weird things. It's like flashbacks, but he's playing himself as a kid. Like, it's actually yeah, still him. I, I loved uh, the bit in the church, all the sounds kind of washed out, hmm. and uh, the image is like double vision, just slightly. It's very, very slight, but it's just out of focus, just telling you this isn't quite real. Yeah, yeah, and, and obviously by the time he sees, he sees himself sitting on the hospital table, uh, with his parents, yeah. and then we see him with a little girl playing Nora, watching their house burn, and presumably that's when their parents died. Um, I find it really interesting that he sees himself, even in these scenes, as the adult version of himself. He doesn't see himself as a child. Do you know what I think that is? I think now, obviously, he prayed for something before he got cancer, but I think the fact that he he got leukemia, which could have very killed, you know, it could have killed him. Yeah, like. That, like I think leukemia is one of those things where you, you, you and you expect the worst. It's not yeah. you don't go in thinking, oh, I mean, oh, you hope obviously, but I, I think him surviving through that is maybe what made him so dedicated to faith in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say these these two events that we see, they're kind of like the events that made him the man who he is. Yeah, but he, he's constantly tested. The fact that his parents then burned in a fire, yeah, testing his faith, like. People would question everything after that. Uh, the fact that he, he gets this money through all these signs and then someone tries to steal it. Test. Yeah, yeah. And exactly that goes back to the whole thing with people being disillusioned with religion. Uh, because, and he's like, no, they're being they're just being tested. We've just got to hold on. Yeah. Uh, and that's the whole reason he's so determined to keep this church running. Because he believes everything's a test. But you, you also, from the same side, go, well, eventually things just have to go your way. <laughs> like, give yeah. or take, you know, this is, this is kind of the argument against it. But he believes it so blindly. Um, and we get all this. But the best part of this story, the most exciting part, is we, we, we discover when, what the accident was. And it actually very neatly tied into the first episode because 
we find out that his wife had her accident. She was she was in the car with him, and it was the car that we saw crash at the start of the first episode in the uh, the, the prologue scene. Because uh, he, he looks over and we see the woman who lost her baby from the, the start of the episode. What? There, there are very few things I remember distinctly mm. about this show from when I first watched it, but this was one of them. This moment of oh, that was him in that car. Yeah, yeah, I remember the smile when he won the the third bet. Third bet. Well, yeah, I mean, Exton he has a very distinctive smile, doesn't he? He does. He does. I remember loving that smile, and then it did not disappoint. On this that film. that smi- that smile is etched into my face. There's a certain one moment from Doctor Who where he does that smile. Yeah, and it's just like yeah. Yeah, so, so, and then there was the sort of the weird, more cryptic part where he's it's presumably cuts to a, a further back flashback. He's having sex with his wife, and then she turns into Laurie at one point, and then it mm. almost flashes to uh, glasses for a brief second, and then goes back to Laurie. It's yeah. just a quick, quick glimmer, and it's back to her, and then then fire. I think that's actually what leads into the the fire, uh, the flashback. It's, it's it's messing in my mind what, what the order of these no no were. I think the fire came first and then this came again yeah but it was We'd fire already... again it, 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 yeah yeah because it was hospital then fire then something else but the, the, those two were definitely yeah, first okay. um, but no yeah so yeah and then, then he wakes up and he's like oh what time is it and he rushes out of bed and Eccleston's arse I was happy to see that thank you very much um, always appreciate it but he's like oh nurse what, what time is it what time is it he's like I've got to be call the bank call the bank and say I'll be there I'm on my way and he, he and it was funny actually. See, see when he was. Uh, this is a stupid thing to not realize, but I was like, where would where his car be though? Like, it could, because he's in an accident, I was thinking, oh, if, if they take it to the, the police station until he picks it up. Uh, but no, it was still where he left it. it you see him run to the exact I, I love the, the moment where, where he, he tells her to call the bank, and she's like, I, I, I don't know what to do here. And he just shouts at her. Mm-hmm. He's just like, just do it. He, he's really like. Yeah, he's he knows how close this is, and he's like, "No, I ain't got time for this." And again, anymore. roller coaster is like, "Oh, he's got the mo- somehow he got the money." Oh no, it's getting robbed. No, he beat the guy up. He's got it back again. Oh, he gets up with a rock, but no, he's back up. He's he's on the rush. He's actually trying to beat the deadline. He's racing down to the bank. He gets in just in time. Well, Banks- no, 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 that's it. He gets to the bank and it's shut. Okay, yeah, it's a couple of minutes late, but then the chaps in the window and the, the banker who knows sees him. He's like, no, let him in, let him in, and he, he gets in and he's like, "I've got the money. Here it is, all of it in cash." Like you asked. He's like, it's too late. He's like, it's, it's, it's ten minutes. It's surely, surely ten minutes is okay. It's like, that was Monday. It's now. You basically the twist here is that he's been he's been in the hospital bed for two days. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 kind of heartbreaking. It is. It's played to perfection. And I, once again, he's too late. Uh, and I, th- I think what's really good with the music in this, particularly the strings that play at times, mm. it very much feels like your world's unraveling as they play. And that kind of yeah. goes perfectly with his thought process here as he realises, oh it. shit, it's, I'm too it's late. It's everything he went through and it was all, all for nothing because he tried to do something good for someone. That's that's what this boiled down to. Every, every time that it got close to him losing it, it was when he gave when he offered the guy 200, yeah. the, uh, when he stopped at the car, you know, he stopped to help the guilty remnant. Like everything, every time that nearly went wrong or when it did go wrong, it's because he stopped to be a good person. And I think it'll be really fascinating going forward to see if that breaks him. Like, does he stop being a good person because he's like, no, this is what cost me? Or is he, or well, does he continue his faith? It, it depends which part is the test. Uh, it, yeah. is, is the test, I'm going to keep making bad, bad things happening to you for being a good person to test if you can keep being a good person. Like... Yeah. Even when even when it seems like all it ends in is your own misery, do you still do it, or is it a different kind of test? Is it is 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 the test like you're too determined or kind of thing? Like is is there more to it than that? Like what has been tested yeah. exactly? Yeah, I'll be really interested to see how he how he takes it and and which path he goes down now. It, it it's it's very interesting. He he he's completely broken. And, and then uh, it's like, oh yeah, they took possession yesterday. Like whoever's bought it's already moved in. And he's like, they. And as soon as he says they, I'm like, oh god, I know who's bought it. Yeah, <laughs> I know who's got it. <laughs> and he, he walks up to his church, and it's been painted white, guilty remnant everywhere. They're throwing the Bibles out and in, into into the trash. And you know, in fact, the episode opened with him putting the sign out, the letters out in the. Yeah, and then sign. when we get back to the church, it's them pulling it down. Yeah, 
and it's Patty who's doing it. And it actually, it actually ends on this. I'm going to refer to it as a Western standoff where the two characters look like they want to kill each other. And it's yeah. like, oh, the battle lines have been drawn. It's, it, the, yeah, it's the moment before they draw the pistols, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Patty's just staring at him, Matt, Matt's staring at Patty, and it's just, that's it. Well, yeah, well, and just to, to keep that analogy going, if this is the moment before they draw the pistols, what exactly are the pistols that they use in this? What what uh, What is his weapon? Yeah, especially, like, he, he tries to be nice to Guilty Remnant, but in a weird way, they are kind of, like, they're opposition to what he's trying to do. In a lot yeah. of ways, uh, as much as they want to be a reminder, and he is kind of bringing up memories, it's for a very different reason. He's he's wanting to remember the right ones, the right way, the wrong ones, the the other way, and they they yeah. are more or less like no, I forget everything personal and just kind of th- it, it's it's very it's a very interesting conflict between two different groups who, from the public's point of view, are both kind of extreme and out there. Yeah, yeah, I think. I, I think that's what this show is doing really well at the minute. It's just showing the different ways that people react. And, you know, maybe we don't always understand why just yet, but we're, we're starting to, I think. We're starting to understand some some reasons as to what this person did to go to choose this route. Hmm. Uh, I think this is the best episode so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, mainly because I, I connected to the, the character a lot more than I have done up until now. Uh, like I said, it was actually a bit of a roller coaster ride in the second half when he has the money and he, he almost loses it and he gets back and then he almost loses it again and he, he just gets there in time, kind of, but then not too late. The, the whole thing was you got up and rushed here for nothing. Like the time's already passed. Yeah. But um, no, I I, th- I think he has he at least is being tested. But then then I think is he being tested because that's what he believes. Yeah. It's, a good question. it's like he seems to constantly be giving it, it, these is, shit hands. Is it because he believes that they're being tested? Whereas everyone else who doesn't believe that. Well, yeah, no, that's, that's fair. It seems so persistent with him. Like how how much of it's happening because he thinks it's happening? Yeah, yeah. And how much does he bring upon himself? Like, like we said, like all of these things at the, in the back half, they happen whenever he tries to do something good. So is it a test or is it just? the fact that he's putting himself into these situations because he's almost naive, especially the, the guy you know, who wants to, to borrow the money, yeah. uh, the hundred. Like that's, that's, that's very naive because the way he comes up, it's clear most people would be cautious of someone like this. But he's just freely going, no, here, have some money. Yeah. Uh, but no, there you go. That was uh, episode three of The Leftovers. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. Individual Twitters are on the screen. Uh, get us on patreon.com, TV. If you want to support the channel, check out some of the bonuses that are over there, including getting these uh, already cancelled episodes a week early. Uh, you can do that. But uh, that is us, guys. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>